I recall one keynote uh, presentation in American Academy, you know, from a very senior fellow on AMD. And I thought I'd hear a lot about AMD from this very experienced uh, surgeon. And what I heard, there was the history of AMD and what's all about AMD, nothing new as a matter of fact, but this gentleman was talking his experience on AMD. Before coming here, you know, I was uh, attending this uh, cluster in the thermometer session, you know. I attended almost half of it. And there, the most of them were of the view that the endophthalmitis is not the doctor's fault, you know. And uh, especially cluster endophthalmitis, not the occasional endophthalmitis. I stood up there and I said, until now, you know, I thought the blame goes to the surgeon. If you have to point who is responsible for endophthalmitis, I think it's the doctor who let the bugs enter into the eye, no matter what size right, of the wound is, but it is him who should be responsible. They didn't quite agree with me in the sense that uh -huh. in cluster uh -huh. of endophthalmitis, there are so many other things involved in a kind of, uh, okay, you know, paper. what I mean by that, you know, so many material, the theater, outside. So, you know, and I thought, you know, today, what I feel is that these incidents of palmitis I was reading, you know, is about 0.04%. It was 0.1. And with the advent of echo surgery, where you make a tiny incision, about 2.2, 2.8, less likely that you let the bugs enter into the eye. So the chance of endophthalmitis should be very much less. Today, our surgeons in Nepal, they all want to be phaco surgeon, obviously. Unless you know how to do cataract surgery, I don't think you will be called an ophthalmologist. And the cataract surgery today is a phaco. And all new surgeons wouldn't like to do phaco. And in Nepal, you know, for this kind of training, they go to the planes where they do about under 200 cataracts a day to learn FECO. And unless, unless they have done about 1,000 or 2,000 small distance cataract surgery, they won't be allowed to learn FECO surgery. Yeah, there are centers where they say you've got to do 1,000. That's where we send the patients. And unfortunately, most of the patients are coming from across the border. Anyway, having said that, I always still feel, if not cluster, most of the endophthalmitis is to be blamed to the surgeon. I know a story about, you know, Abraham Lincoln, I don't know whether it's a true story, was asked to cut down the trees from the garden in one hour by his father, and you know what he did? He spent half an hour sharpening his ax. So you got to spend time in preventive to be sure the surgeon has to be careful if he suspect anything okay I am op I, I'm not going to operate this patient <laughs> you know kind of like this so this is what it is you know prevention is more important when it comes to endophthalmitis of course so that's having said that and I, I, I want to touch my experience in ophthalmitis our experience that matter I'm not been operating for a while but I remember one case of me which I never going to forget is a, a patient who second day become developed high opium and third or fourth day I was no PL even and I had to within a week to eviscerate this eye and we grew pseudomonas there, you know, only one case I remember. So that's what it is. So today what I'm going to talk about two topics, you know, our problem in the palmitis mainly cluster in endophthalmitis, those have been reported. Otherwise, normally, no one will report occasional endophthalmitis, all right? So we have got a few publications from Nepal where they have published their experience on cluster in endophthalmitis. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of my talk will be endophthalmitis, and I so reckon it's not infective. Probably it's non-infective or allergic or something like that. Okay, here you are. Endophthalmitis to me is uh, as an exogenous 
which is infective and I have got analysis mm -hmm. non-infective. Mm -hmm. And we're talking yeah. about we're going to talk about post-operative endocarditis. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, post-traumatic or I'm not going to talk about post-fistulous operation. And I'm going to talk mainly cluster endocarditis, post-operative, obviously infective. And the second, I'll be mm. talking about non-infective, uh, which we level as seasonal in mm. our mm. experience mm. there. Mm. Question card. This is Nepal, mm. and as you see, you know, there are quite a few very good tertiary mm. eye care centers mm. near, mm. near the border mm. of India, and mm. that's mm. where they operate. Mm. About 100, 200 mm. cases a day, you know, and the operation they perform usually mm. are small mm. the cat mm. surgery, mm. and now recently they have started doing cacao mm. surgery also. So this is cluster in and there's a different different definition of cluster. Mm. If you see about four or five cases, same day, same operating room, same hospital by one surgeon. Is a uh, cluster in the mm. Now, this is one uh, report, uh, retrospective case studies of cluster in the after a manual <coughs> assess <coughs> surgery. 19 patients develop acute cluster in the mitosis within two weeks or so following manual cataract surgery. And air conditioning. Look at it. The case is operated on that day, about 225 cases, can you imagine, 225 cases operated, out of that 19 of them developed in the mitosis, and we call it uh, the mitosis. The intraoperative complication, you can see, you know, they can be contributory to the infection, as a matter of fact, and the visual acuity you've seen about uh, hand movements, and 165, 60 movement. And the vitreous culture developed was staph epidermis and aureus. And the treatment given the standard today, you know, earliest treatment, they reckon if you make it late, you know, the <coughs> toxin and organism damages the photoreceptor just like that. I think even if you succeed, but the vision may not uh, come back there. And look at the result, not bad, you know, of the visual equity. This is outcome at the end of surgery. This is the second cluster of the cluster in the thyroid referred to a tertiary center in Kathmandu from outside probably uh, about 11 cases. And there uh, about 10 had small intestinal cataract surgery and uh, one had extra capsular conventional. Uh, there was a rent in uh, posterior capsule which can be contributory uh, to, to, to the infection and look at the uh, visual acuity uh, before operation and there you are uh, very unusual to two of them have E. coli, I don't know, intravitreal antibiotics. The standard treatment at the earliest is as pointed out earlier by the, uh, Dr. Uh, Led Burma is the uh, SEFTA instead of amikin and vancomycin, and usually they use dexamethasone also, you know. It has been the standard treatment in all these cluster cases. Not, not they have uh, uh, improved vision, all right. And this is the third one, again, cluster in the mitosis. This is a study in the eye camp situation, you know. I reckon, you know, I don't think one would do cataract, one should do cataract surgery uh, in, a, in a camp, I suppose, situation. Uh, there you are, uh, 18 total surgery, 18, 89 and uh, 18 developed uh, your uh, endophthalmitis, uh, visual equity in most of them less than uh, 360, and culture, it doesn't say which organism, but you see the positive and negative, uh, same treatment given intravitreal antibody, vancomycin, is, and amikin here in the steroid. Uh, six underwent core vitrectomy, and the visual outcome you see in this case about seven probably go, go went on to 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 thysis also it's unfortunate. Now this is the situation of cluster in the uh, in Nepal about three reports, um, and the message is probably not to get it. You got to be careful. Like I said at the outset, you know, 
that the surgeon has to be very, very careful, you know, uh, they don't do well most of the time, uh, and the treatment, you got to start in the very, very, very beginning. Anyway, this is what our experience of cluster endothelmitis, and, uh, and the second is about this condition, we called it uh, non-infective uh, endothelmitis, and here you see uh, the, 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 the uh, moths here, and we reckon these white moths are responsible for this endothelmitis. Let me... Now this is a uh, long time back, you know, I noticed these uh, patients, uh, usually they are ch children of both sexes, uh, developing non-infective type of separation which we called uh, endophthalmitis, and uh, in the beginning they, some doctors probably prefer to call it severe uh, seasonal uh, uveitis. The disease, uh, we found it very uh, unilateral and uh, characterized by, like I said, uh, uh, in sudden onset of redness of the eye, uh, there is white pupil and profound visual loss, and uh, you won't be, you, you are not, able to see the retina because there's the lot of exudation in the vitreous like uh, earlier pointed out, you know, uh, endophthalmitis means inflammation with exudation into the vitreous cavity. The vitreous get involved in the very early uh, stages. This was uh, myself reporting 1978, you know, long time ago, 78 means about, about 40, 20, about 40 years ago, you know, all my patients, about 13 cases, they were all around 10, 15 years of old, uh, landed up losing their vision. You know. And I think uh, there was direct or indirect evidence of their being in contact with these white moths, you know, which, which used to be seen, you know, during that period of time, usually August, September, uh, we used to call it tussock moths, with different names to white moths. I remember one of these moths sitting on my uh, hand, and I, when I removed it, I could see the little nettles, you call it, like the grounded glasses, you know. Probably the children rub their eyes and uh, mostly see in the right eye, but you do see in the left eye also unilateral. And in all of them, you know, rapidly developing uh, signs of endothalmitis, like characterized by uh, white pupil exudation into the, into the anterior chamber, more in the vitreous, uh, which I label as endothalmitis. A maximum, th that time I could do was uh, injecting steroid, you know, mainly. I was so sure that there is no infective component in it, you know. I think it is just allergic response to these moths, I thought, you know. And all 13 children, you know, unfortunately lost their vision. And, uh, and uh, until then I used to tell the people and came out in the paper to keep away from these moths, keep the children away from these moths, you know, which appear during September, October. And then another study done, a colleague of mine, you know, also uh, thought probably it has something to do with these moths, you know, though he couldn't find any organism growing uh, from the vitreous or the anterior chamber, mostly from vitreous. Uh, so until then, you know, we're not, we're not sure what the culprit is, you know, or was that time. So. Again, uh, there is a colleague of mine, another, he, he reckoned probably uh, same thing, the moths population high during that period. And what is said that probably if you intervene this patient, do vitrectomy, you know, within hours, if not within days, uh, if you do within hours, I think he could preserve some vision in a, in a few patient. And, and so like I said, it says intense the way the intraocular infex infection takes place so fast and rapidly uh, in the vitreous cavity, the, he thought probably it is uh, probably something like endothalmitis rather than uh, uveitis. And in this case, uh, patient did recover some kind of vision because he did core vitrectomy, I think, within, within hours or days. Uh, so it's a, still a very confusing state of affairs, you know, we try to isolate bacteria. Uh, there have been some report of uh, by, uh, some bacteria being isolated, uh, but uh, this is a very new uh, study, 2018. Uh, still, you see there are total cases 66, mean about, mean age about 10, 11 again, you know, 
and uh, look at the result. Uh, result. Look at the result. This is the recent one, 2018, and the vision at the time of presentation in children usually uh, less than 360, and uh, uh, majority of them uh, didn't improve their uh, vision. So we feel that you know, until uh, until we find a definite uh, management treatment or a remedy to this condition which we still label as uh, idiopathy if you want to call it or or seasonal or, or endophthalmitis uh, i think for the last 20 years 78 I mean 20 40 years we still are getting patients children mostly and uh, if the child land up a place where there is no provision of hysterectomy, I think by large they are uh, losing sight, you know, from 20, 20, 40 years, and uh, we have not yet found a definite cause. No bacteria, there have been some report of yeah, identifying uh, or bacteria getting involved, but uh, not full proof yet, you know. So the message is, you know, until then, I think we got to keep our actually warn our children, even adults, to keep away from these moths which appears mostly during autumn season. Uh, every alternate year, now they are beginning to be seen every year also, as a matter of fact. Uh, and uh, if you have facility for vitrectomy, do vitrectomy whenever you see that there's the no view of the retina. The vitreous is so much cloudy. You know, I recall one patient, which I perform, when I did vitrectomy, they're all like cloud cheese material in the vitreous cavity, and I was scared that uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing more than just core vitrectomy because right now was just just there, man. So that's it. So until then, intravitreal steroid and early vitrectomy have been found to be a little useful, but by large, most of the children are losing season, you know, losing vision, man. So I was wondering whether we we see in this part of our sharp region, cases like this, you know, this is the reason why I made this presentation all to share your views on this uh, disease which is, keep, which is making children blind, man. That's the, that's the reason I think. Um, okay, thank you very okay. much, you know. So m our problem is cluster endophthalmitis uh. and this seasonal endophthalmitis. And regarding cluster endophthalmitis, I just said, you know, I think then there must have been some yeah. your experience we'd like okay. to share. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Uh, this is the internet.